Hi and welcome to our channel. We've been homesteading for about two years and now that we're directly connected to our food, the weather, especially rain, has taken on a new importance to us. Being responsible for the health and well-being of our livestock and chubby pasture pets like these three makes the condition of our pastures a major concern and right now ours aren't great. We're in stage two drought status in our area currently, and according to some winter forecasts I've seen, we're in for a warm, dry winter. Like cooler air, so overall, this kind of favors the sub, sub, you know, southern branch to have less active and you know drier activity across the southern tier of the United States. In our last video, we tackled a small area on the northern edge of our property that wasn't fenced. The forage isn't the best, but it was already fenced on two sides, so making it available to our cattle was quick. It also provided some needed shade, which they have definitely loved. We started here with about 14 acres of grazable pastures divided up into four main areas. The addition of this new pasture didn't add much and didn't take long before it was pretty well cleared out. We need to improve that pasture in the months to come. The next area we'll focus on has a fence on one side only, and it's about the same size, but it's a lot better forage, so we will tackle it next. Building fences doesn't really make for interesting videos. One T-post or a hundred, they're all the same. One corner or H-brace, and you've pretty much seen them all. I once visited the Redwoods in Northern California, and while I love trees and just being in a forest, I kind of felt the same way. Yeah, they're amazing, but once you've seen a few, eh, it starts to feel like you've seen them all. So while we're at it, I'll share the story of getting cattle for the first time. Emily and I both grew up in town with no connection to livestock. I hadn't so much as touched a cow, let alone everything else that comes for caring for them before we got our first cow and her calf. I had done lots of research and I knew I wanted to go with Dexter's, but I was initially paralyzed with information overload. I found it difficult to know what to buy. There seemed to be so many things to consider, like a good udder and good feed, and overall body composition, horns or pulled, etc. We finally decided to just pull the trigger on a three-in-one, a cow and her calf, and she was also bred back for the next calf and she was available close by. We didn't have a truck or a livestock trailer at the time, so the owner let us borrow their old trailer and we brought them home with our minivan. I'm sure that amused our seasoned cattle ranching neighbors, but whatever, it's what we had and we made it work. Now people had told us to make sure our fences were in good shape, so I looked them over as best I could. Our pastures were all set up for goats, and everybody knows how goats can escape from anything, so I figured if they're good enough for goats, then they're good enough for cows, right? We brought our skinny little cow and her calf home and we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. The whole process is intimidating to someone who just weeks before didn't know the difference between a steer and a heifer. It made me happy seeing them out grazing since where they had come from was mostly woods with little good pastures and they needed to gain weight. We didn't know what we were doing but we had our first cow. As a side note, these are not great examples of Dexter's and were probably a poor choice. I work from home so I'd look out the window periodically and see them out there eating and looking happy. At some point the next day, however, I looked out and only saw the calf in the pasture. I was pretty stunned when I went to investigate and discovered the cow had somehow slipped through the fence and was now in the unfenced woods on the other side. I tried to entice her back into the pasture with some treats in a bucket, but she didn't trust me and wasn't having it. She was used to the woods in her old home, and that is definitely where she wanted to be. The problem is, our road isn't far away, and we didn't know if she'd stay put there or go wandering off. Eventually, the calf found her way through the fence too, and now they were both out there. We weighed our options. We thought a lot about calling the lady we had bought them from and asking her to come over and help get them back in. After all, they trusted her and would most certainly have followed her with a treat bucket right back in, but the truth is, we just couldn't do it. It was too humiliating. We were the idiots from the suburbs who let their cow escape less than 24 hours after bringing them home. Well, I was working and couldn't do anything about it until later in the day, so Emily took a chair into the woods and kept an eye on them, making sure they didn't wander towards the road or off our property until I could figure out what to do. An already challenging day was about to get worse.
This ground down here is so hard, I can't get that auger to cut through it. So, Let's see if we can soften it up. Our son had started having serious migraines around this time. They were the scariest medical emergency I've ever personally had to deal with. They started with a headache and an aura, but quickly progressed to becoming nonverbal and unable to move arms and legs and eventually lost consciousness. They resembled a stroke and it was incredibly scary. The day started with losing our cows and now I was rushing my son to the emergency room in fear of his life. Well, we'll save the migraine details for another day, but fortunately he made it through and we eventually figured out what was causing them and he's good now, but it was a scary time for our family. So back to the cows. Emily came up with the idea to pick up some of that bright orange safety fencing at Home Depot and to set up a temporary fence that we could use as a visual barrier that would hopefully keep them from running towards the road as we force them out of the woods. We set up that fence, pushed them out of the woods, drove them straight through to the gate like a funnel, and back into the safety of fenced pastures. It worked like a charm. We've talked to countless people since that day and learned that pretty much everybody deals with escaped cows, and it really wasn't that big of a deal. But at the time, we felt like the biggest losers and were just too embarrassed to ask for help. Thankfully, we figured it out and haven't had any problems since. Green Acres it isn't, but this little area on, is ready for the cows. Come on. Come on. Ranger. Ranger. Come on, Clem. Okay, it's appropriate that she'd be the first one. You've been wanting this for two years, Clem. Two years you've been wanting this. I got this go around. You can go in. Come on, you dummies. Come over here. Winnie. Come on, Jesse. Okay, you approve, huh? I like how he jumps through. <laughs> like there's a... <laughs> One or two acres seems like a lot when you live on less than a quarter of an acre in town. But it's really not much and it doesn't take long before it's pretty well consumed. Here we are just a couple weeks later. In the meantime, we've been working on the next area. It's a little over two acres, and it's the best green stuff we've got at the moment. It was cut for hay earlier this year, and it's ready to go. This puts us at about 19 acres. We increased our grazable pastures by about 27% with all this work, and it's sure to help. All right. The next three acres are ready to go. Call them up here. Come on, cows. Come on. Come on up. Come on. Come on. Get them up here and then I can open that gate. Come on. Ooh, Winnie, you got it. <laughs> what? Okay. You ready for the grand opening? Okay, you got to do as I say, you got to follow my instructions. Okay, you ready? Back up. Back up. You got to back up. 
you gotta back up so you can come through. Okay, come on. Come on up here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, cows. Come on. Come on, cows. Come on. Now you can go down. You two ponies, go on. Coming? Come on. Come on. Come on, Slider, you're on the wrong side, dude. Calves are always so dumb. I know these two acres won't last long, but just this week we got a little over two inches of rain and things will be getting greener soon. I really want to rotate pastures more than we've been able to in the past, so hopefully those areas I can close now will get some rest while this new space keeps them occupied, and then hopefully I'll be able to rotate a little more. Managing pastures is actively debated. Mob grazing, rotational grazing, you name it, there's opinions. We'll have to figure out what works best for us and do the best we can. Come on, cows! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! As I reflect back on these last two years, there have been a lot of changes, but man has it been rewarding. We've had lots of births and some deaths. They say if you have livestock, you also have dead stock, and that is definitely true, and it's hard. But there's not much more fun for first time cattle people than going out early in the morning to check on them and finding brand new calves already cleaned up and doing well. We've almost eaten our first freezer full of our very own beef, and it has been awesome. It's time to take the next one in soon, and in the spring, we'll have our next round of calves. The work never ends, and that's the way we like it. Hope you all have a great day, and thanks for watching.